Next up, we're going to talk about comments made by Sway Lee, who is one half of Ray Shrimmerd. Uh, he went on he went on blast on social media talking about how black people should not vote for Kamala Harris uh, uh -oh. because they think they should because she's black, essentially is what he is saying. Um, now, he gave his reasons. He tried to get a little more substantive with mm -hmm. the reasoning behind why he feels that way. But the essence of his message is, you know, black people need to chill with automatically leaping to the conclusion that they're supposed to vote for her because of the symbolic stuff. Um, I encourage everybody, everybody who has not seen it to check out the video that we did last week discussing her, um, you know, uh, with respect to comments made by Candace Owens. Uh, a lot of people had a lot to say about that, but we touched on the issue, or, or at least I did. I touched on the problems with the current political climate uh, with respect to identity politics, which I think is a poison that is killing everybody. Um, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on or what color you are or who you are. I think identity politics is destroying the very fabric of this country, in my opinion. Um, but I digress. Uh, so this says Sway Lee urges black people not to vote for Kamala Harris for one reason. Sway Lee has called on his fans not to vote for likely Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris in this year's election. Uh, taking to X. The Ray Shrimmerd rapper aired out his grievances with the sitting vice president who is set to replace Joe Biden as her party's nominee. Sway started by saying, do not vote for Kamala. Do your research on that whole camp. He then explained his opposition to Harris in more detail. I pay over millions in tax dollars every year. This man sent it to a whole nother country. Those little dollars that came off your checks, they gave it away. Think about that shit. Uh, so here are his tweets here. Uh, so here are more of his tweets. The money we sent away, every American citizen could have got minimal 200 grand. Think about that. But I guess we don't need the shit. And y'all standing for Kamala. My black people, she don't do nothing but sign off on things against y'all. Voting just because you think she's black. Um, bro, you voting for her because you think she's black. She's black and Indian. She don't lean to the black side. She just took uh, any state away from a black woman. I think he meant to say amnesty, but I guess he just doesn't know how to spell or say that. Uh, away from a black woman, y'all don't y'all don't research. Go look at what Trump did for blacks. HBCUs, all type shit. Media don't show everything, bro. Uh, and that was in response to somebody who came at him by saying. Hey, when you rapper in words, only get your politics from other in words planted in your life for these exact moments in history. Uh, the Black Beatles hit maker then directed his warning to his fellow Black Americans, and that's more of what I already read. Um, Sway Lee was widely criticized for his comments, with many accusing him of being selfish and ignorant. And that was a quote, quote from what I also read here. Sway Lee and his ilk are selfish, uninformed, ignorant, greedy, and white supremacist adjacent clowns. <laughs> these these neo-blacks repping Trump are white nationalists and greedy mofos. <laughs> another, another said, Trump gave you the largest tax cut in the history of tax cuts. You are a wealthy musician. Why do you deserve more tax breaks than regular, everyday, hardworking people? Pay your fair share. A third user attempted to enlighten the 31-year-old rapper on the government's fiscal policies, responding, are you stupid? In 2022, total U.S. foreign aid, both economic and military, to every country was $70 billion. For comparison, the Department of Education got $80 billion. So I guess that commenter's point is money spent domestically on the Department of Education exceeds money spent elsewhere, like for the military or for foreign aid. Um, that's about $200 per person for comparison. Your mansion is worth 22,000 times that times more than that. Uh, Sway later hit back and expressed support for Harris's political opponent, Donald Trump, bro. You voting for her. Cause you think she's black. She's black and Indian. She don't lean to the black side. She just took, okay. So that was a, a quote mm -hmm. that I already read. Um, in response to another critic, who pointed out that every president sends money abroad as part of international obligations. Sway said, it's time it stops. And she gave away billions upon billions. Why are we sitting here hurting in this country? So many hungry, you remember who gave the stimulus and PPP, right? 
So that's basically the gist of it. Um, this kid here is uh, pro-Trump all the way, 100%. And it seems as though he is pro-Trump for economic reasons. Uh, he feels as though voting blue, going for Harris, going Democrat is problematic if you're only doing it for the symbolic reason of her being a black female and less about um, economic policies that, in his opinion, <laughs> would be best for the direction of the country. So what do you have to say about Sway Lee's comments there? This is how old I am. I did not realize that this guy is 31. Damn, um, he is? Yeah, it says he's 31. So the more I think about I mean, he has been in the game for a minute. Yeah. But you know, but yeah, I didn't I, I didn't think he, I didn't know he was that old. But yeah, what do you make of this exchange and him going off, you know, with his thoughts on Harris there? I mean, I think the the pushback that he was getting is for sure is him talking to his or, or at least people who follow him or who's adjacent to him uh, that would uh, that was giving him such they were giving him this pushback because, well. He's a rapper. So since he's a rapper and he's coming out the way that he's coming out about this topic, since he doesn't talk about politics any other time, people going to have something to say about that. They don't respect him about that. Uh, go hit a melody. So um, I'm sure they were just heavy handed just off the strength of him talking about it. Also, it didn't serve him talking about how much millions of dollars he lost in taxes. That's not going to serve the people as well. So he left enough fodder out there for people to, to throw some stuff back at him. However, um, I still agree with him in the stance that voting for Kamala uh, just for the mere fact that people believe that she's black is um, is laughable. And uh, I don't want to say it's a waste of vote because I think voting is just a waste of time. But still, it's a situation of, man, that's the only reason why. But when you talk to a lot of the um, African-Americans who would like to vote uh, for the blue party, uh, it's just a default for 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 black people. They, they honestly believe it's the black party. So and if you got somebody in there that's brown, uh, it's, 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 it's hitting all the cues. So the masses that were already going to do that are going to keep doing that. So Sway throwing this out there uh, to a large demographic of people who are his fans that are probably Democratic are not going to like what he's got to say here. Um, I don't think this is cornball sellout. I think he is really protecting his bottom line, his dollar. I think a lot of people who are voting for the other side, the red side, are looking at the financial side of it, all of this. Uh, there are extremists who are looking uh, on the red side to get other things outside of finances. All right. Uh, certain bills or things passed to go in their favor. So uh, there is no right side of the aisle. If you ask me, uh, I don't believe in the, the concept of the lesser of two evils. Don't ask me to pick between the two. All right. Um, so I think where he's coming from is a genuine spot. And I would second his motion on look at what happened financially in this country in the last four years. Uh, I would say uh, it's an absolute joke. I mean, going to the, I used to love going to the grocery store, bro. You know, swiping everything and not even checking how much it costs and walking up out of there and I spent $40 and I had a ball. Now I'm I'm checking prices. I'm grabbing receipts. I'm doing, I'm not receipts, uh, coupons. I'm doing everything and I'm getting half the stuff for more than $40. And uh, it's not changing. It's getting aggressively worse. So uh, so this guy who has something smart to say about Sway Lee be, because of, uh, you know, we gave 80 million or and versus the 70 and, you know, that's two hundred dollars or two whatever. And you made twenty two thousand dollars. Your house cost. 20, like, you know, this this that's 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 a that's a real smart ass answer. The The overall point that I think he was trying to get at is. Is that okay? Well, whatever. It's impacting me, you know, but it's also impacting you. And even though you know he he got all this stuff or whatever, he's gonna still sleep good at night, regardless of who's in thing, uh, who's in power, you know. Uh, he just can't live as luxurious, but he's still gonna be straight. But it's the people that's in the middle class who's teetering on that line to poverty line, who's really feeling the impact. What what um 
with apartments, you know, doing credit checks, got to make three times the amount. They doing mm -hmm. all this extra stuff. And, you know, you know, a, a one bedroom is seventeen hundred two thousand dollars. Um, the average the average everyday person is going to fill it. So I think what Sway was trying to get at was, hey, man, everybody's money's getting tight and um, you can sit here and act like it ain't. But if you put this lady in office, uh, why wouldn't the trend continue? So uh, I'm not saying that my my denouncement for Kamala is an endorsement for Trump. I think both of them are clowns. But I think uh, this Kamala stuff is one of the biggest clown shows that uh, we have uh, seen in politics in quite some time. Bigger of a clown show than Trump. <laughs> bigger, bigger than Biden, as crazy as that sounds. But what are your thoughts on Sir Sway Lee uh, saying that, hey, man, don't vote for Miss Kamala, man. Uh, you you down with that or you agree with the uh, naysayers and saying uh, he needs to stay in his place? Yeah, I agree with the spirit of his message in that I never think that it is productive to participate in a process as consequential as this mm -hmm. because of feels and symbolism. Mm -hmm. um, I do not think it is prudent for people to vote for the lesser candidate because you just want to see a, a person who's a woman or who's black or a black woman be in charge because you think symbolically that would just be a wonderful thing to see. So just on the surface, based upon that alone, I loathe identity politics and how much of a weapon it's become against the people in terms of influencing how someone is supposed to participate in the political process. And Whenever I speak on these issues, I don't speak from the standpoint of affluent people. I'm talking about working class people, working class people who make up 70% of this country, not everybody else. 70% mm -hmm. um, of this country is not happy with what's going on. I don't give a damn what you say. Uh, I don't care if you think Trump is the most evil person in the world. It doesn't matter. And you think Kamala is the most qualified person ever. The fact of the matter is 70% of the people in this country disapprove of the direction of the economy. And depending on who you speak to, it's always the other person's fault. You know, um, you know, people on the DNC side will say, well, the Republicans did this and Trump did that. And that's why the economy's jacked up. People on the Trump Republican red side are going to say Biden did this and the Democrats did that. And that's why the economy's messed up to either side. It's the other person's fault. Right. And what people on the ground are asking for is, can somebody please give me a specific detail laden plan for how you are going to fix this? Hmm. Like I said, like I said last week. People primarily care about two things, in my opinion, when it comes to politics overall. First, I think they care about minimizing the chances of global conflict, mm -hmm. and they care about the economy. Those are the two things that people care about the most. Once you move past global conflict and the economy, then we get into other things like education, pro-choice, women's rights, all of that good stuff. OK, but first and foremost, in my opinion, people care about global conflict and they care about the economy. So what people who make up 70 percent of this country are saying is, I don't give a damn who this is, whether you're red, blue, I don't give a damn. Somebody please give me a specific concrete blueprint for how you are going to fix this so that i am not ha so that i am not constantly living paycheck to paycheck despite the fact that i'm a single earner who at this point is making close to 70 75k a year like at this point the rate of inflation is such that the price of goods and services has far exceeded a commensurate rate of wages and salaries mm -hmm. to the point where you can be in the 70k range and depending on where you live, depending on your market, you're still struggling living paycheck to paycheck yeah. unless you're combining incomes. Correct. And 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 this is people who don't have kids, who don't have families. Mm -hmm. So if you throw children into the mix, it's a whole different ball game. Yep. And these people are literally scraping by all year long, waiting to get their little chunk of change back from the IRS because they can claim kids on their taxes as dependents. Mm -hmm. That is not thriving. That's merely existing. Correct. And what 70% of this country is saying is 
Can somebody give me a blueprint for how to thrive instead of existing? Reduce this wealth gap, get rid of these ridiculous taxations so that everyone has a better chance to thrive economically. Not everybody's going to make six figures. Not everybody's going to win the lottery. Not everybody's an NBA player. Not everybody's a rapper or an entertainer. Not everybody is a famous artist or a real estate tycoon or a, or a famous chef who owns five restaurants. Not everybody has six properties that they rent out. 70% of this country is working class, people who depend on a check writer. Now, you can look down upon those people and say, well, do better. But the reality is this is the majority of the people. And they want to know how you're going to fix this. Mm -hmm. And to those people who are wondering how you're going to fix this, a person like Sway Lee's comments make a little bit of sense. I don't give a shit if you're a black woman. How are you going to fix this? Right. And so I think the spirit of Sway Lee's message is, yo, stop it with the systematic programming. He's not like, OK, I'm not going to speak for him. I'll speak for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying she's the she's not the right person to vote for. I'm also not saying he's not the right person to vote for. What I'm saying is somebody needs to be specific with the plan mm -hmm. instead of fear mongering over the border and 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 and, and, and the A word women's rights and 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 racism. Straight fear mongering tactics. Like, that's what people care about. Uh, so, you know, when he's talking, he's obviously speaking from his perspective as a person who's a millionaire. But I don't think that that makes what he is saying any less true from the perspective of those on the ground who are looking around for some sort of actual leadership. Like, what's the plan? Fix it. What are your plans for this? Because the sooner you minimize the chance of global conflict and the sooner you can ease the burden that this economy is putting on 70 percent of the people in this country the sooner we can focus our efforts on some of these other things that y'all care about so much yeah i'll start i'll start looking at systematic racism more because i'll have the bandwidth to step back and breathe and i can actually pay attention more maybe i'll focus on women's rights more if i'm not a woman because women clearly are lockstep that they all care about that stuff Mm -hmm. You know, things like what they're doing in public school systems, you know, um, some of these weirdo agendas that they're trying to institute in public schools. Or if you look <laughs> on the other side, things like Project 2025, where they're literally trying to defund the Department of Education. I agree. Some of that. I agree that a lot of that stuff is important. But at the same time, I do not have the bandwidth to care as much about that when me as a single earner literally cannot afford to put a roof over my head because landlords want first and last and security on an apartment that's $2,000 a month in rent. Do you, I, so I just have $6,000 to just give you so that I can move into this space. Or depending on the market that you live in, no one has four or $500,000 to put down on a single family home. Not like that. These prices for goods and services and basic amenities are absolutely through the roof and it's crushing people like people are crippled. So, yeah, I'm on the same wavelength in terms of, look, I don't give a shit about your symbolism. You're a black woman. OK, that's wonderful. I'll celebrate that 30 years from now when my children are generationally wealthy. But for now, I need you to give me a specific plan for how you're going to reverse some of this ridiculousness. I don't even care whose fault it is. You say it's their fault. The other people say it's your fault. So from my standpoint, it's everybody's fault. And some of these people who are going to comment on this video are going to have receipts for how it's the other side's fault. Everybody has a reason for why it's the other guy's fault. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of that. I don't give a damn. Somebody fix it. So I hear what he's saying, because what he is saying is essentially somebody needs to come up with a blueprint for how they are going to reverse some of the true ways that people around here hurting in these streets outside of demanding that people need to vote for them because of symbolism, race, sex, gender and all of this other garbage that people care less about. So um, it kind of parrots a lot of the talking points that I brought up last week, but it reinforces it. Nevertheless, I think people are just really exhausted. At the end yeah. of the day, people are exhausted and they're over it and they're tired of it. And like, I disagree with you from the standpoint that voting is like a waste of time, but I can't fault you for feeling that way because sometimes you look at it and it's like, well, what the hell is the point? 
four years later, this is still what it is. So I hear what I hear what you're saying. It's just unfortunate that I can't come at you and be like, nah, bro, you need to be on this because for all intents and purposes, it is a clown fiesta. Um, yeah. I'll leave the rest of it to you because I kind of went on and on there, yeah. but I don't have a problem too much with what Mr. Sway Lee had to say there. I mean, I agree, dude. And I think ultimately what people need to start start looking at and black people in particular is to really take a step back. I mean, take a step back, step away, take a step back. And while you're taking a step back and looking at what's going on, you will actually see what's really happening is outside of, you know, systemic racism. Honestly, it's systemic classism that's going on. And it's, with rooted, the system, it's rooted in economics. Yeah. yeah. And with, what's happening here is everybody that's at a certain level is getting the shaft right now, black included, white included. All right. And so one of the things that I'm, I tell people all the time and, you know, to remove it from the political arena, but just looking into your everyday life, as I mentioned earlier in my, my first comment, I was talking about the grocery store and I also brought up rent you know, living expenses, mortgage prices, all this other stuff. When you look at your actual health, all right, and I've already talked about here before where, you know, all of these GM, GMOs, all of these uh, pesticides, all these chemicals, all of the stuff that they put in people's foods, microplastics, you name it, all right? The name of the game right now, in order to make sure that you're going to be a sustainable person in the future, you know, surviving and not having ailments and relying on big pharma, is making sure that you eat the right foods. It's all the way down to the right kind of water. All right. I make sure I drink alkaline water. Now, I got some throwaway sink water here, too. All right. But I mainly drink alkaline water because the name of the game is you need to be able to afford good water. The name of the game is you need to be able to afford good food. If you want to eat greens, eat good greens, clean greens. If you want to eat chicken, eat some clean chicken. It's going to cost you more. You saw this pack over here that cost $16 and the other pack that cost nine, that cost $9 for a reason. You need to be able to afford that $16 pack if you want to eat that chicken. You need to be able to afford that $6 box of pasta if you want to eat that. So the name of the game right now is class. And if you ain't in that class, actually, you're everything's becoming a food desert at this point is what I'm getting at. So if, if you want to go eat fast food, if you want to go to your local grocery store, or whatever, most likely it's full of garbage. So you need to be able to afford good food. You need to be able to afford good health care. You need to be able to afford good schools for your children. You need to be able this is class. And everything that they're doing right now, especially inflation, especially all these uh, forms of taxation that they're doing right now is to make sure that the American people stay broke. One of the bet one of the better ways that they made sure that everybody stayed broke is all these subscription programs. You got to subscribe to this, subscribe to that. Everything went from hey Pam, you know whatever one flat rate or whatever. Now everything's subscription based. Six dollars here, nine dollars there, twenty dollars there. You go over here, whatever, whatever. Insurance for your cars going up. Everybody's taxing. And then so back in the day, it was taxation without representation. Blah 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 blah. blah. So they just broke down all those forms of taxation into all these various corporate entities. We're all in bed with each other laying down. So the name of the game is uh, economics, classism, you know, you know, down the line there's racism and other things. I'm not saying that racism doesn't exist. But one thing one thing that people need to understand is that the big game here is classism and they're lumping everybody in that boat. All right. So whenever they had uh, slaves out there in the field, yeah, they had the ones in the field. They had the ones in the house, but then they had the poor whites making sure that they were the supervisors. You know, they just call them team leads and everything now. But it's the same. It's the same premise. They're the, they're the poor whites. <laughs> and those are people struggling. They're not the ones who own the house. They're not the ones who's financing the boats. You know, they got it better than the people in the field. They're making a little bit more money, but not nothing, nothing like masters making. And those people out there, that's the overseers who think that they're better than everybody else or whatever. They're starting to see it, too. And they're starting to see that, hey, my my skin complexion ain't cutting it. It's actually my finances. All right. So you need to be able to afford good health care, afford good food, afford good schooling for your kids. You need to be able to do that. And in order to make sure you need to be able to do that, you need to make the right kind of capital. And one thing that this country is doing right now, especially within the last four years, is taxing the hell out of you. So you can't afford to do it. So 
uh, one thing that Sway brought up here was a good point. You know, it was in his little world. He's a rapper, so he got millions of dollars. He don't want to come off his millions of dollars. But what he's speaking on is tipping the iceberg or scratching the iceberg of something that's a lot bigger. This is bigger than race. This is bigger than hip hop. You know, this is what's going on in the country. So I'm not saying that Trump is the answer. I'm not damn sure I ain't saying Kamala's the answer. What I'm saying is the answer is with us. Black, white, brown, everybody in between. Everybody that's getting the shaft right now from Netflix and, and uh, Publix and Kroger's and all of everything in between. Everybody. everybody. Everybody's trying to get us. Everybody. So my thing is, is just pay attention, man. They try, and whenever you watch CNN, pay attention to what they're talking about. So whenever you're watching CNN, Fox, or whatever, one side's talking about race, one side's talking about this, one side's talking about that, one side, but nobody's talking about the classism that's happening right now. And so I'm telling you guys right now, that's what that's what's really going on right here. So uh, so yeah, man, guys, pay attention. You know, Sway Lee, you know, he he's saying it the best way he can. Uh, and he's he's telling he's telling whoever's willing to listen that uh if you're voting for this woman here just merely for the 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 complexion of her skin then you you're, you're <laughs> honestly you shouldn't vote <laughs> you shouldn't vote if you're doing identity politics you know what i'm saying but uh yeah that's another debate but um yeah guys just pay attention man and uh make sure you put your right ducks in a row man because whether it's project 2025 whether it's agenda 30 they got stuff down the line planned for everybody. And you got to make sure you got your ducks in a row to make sure you don't get the shaft. So, uh, hey, shout out to Sway Lee and uh, Kit Rocks, Kamala. And I saw a clip about her anyway, talking about greens. I saw her. I was just joking last week. But she said, hey, man, I make a mean pot of greens. I was like, no, nah, no way. <laughs> she said, I had so many greens, I had to prepare them in the bathtub. That's like, excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, I, I. I think people are just people are just exhausted with all of this stuff, you mm -hmm. know. And people are people will get upset with him because of the money that he makes and the fact that he's a hip hop person, like you said. But uh, I think one of the biggest disservices that this process has done to all people is the way that it was able to successfully pivot to tugging at your heartstrings in order to influence how you participate in this process instead of looking at things conventionally because that's what's caused the wealth gap to rise and that is what has caused people to not be able to keep up in a commensurate manner with the rise of the cost of goods and services um, and it is crippling the hell out of everybody um, and it's ironic too because these people who get on these political platforms and they host these shows on these on these news networks, Fox and MSNBC and CNN, like it's you know, it's easy for them to talk about every all of this. It's easy for them to to touch on things like race, sex, and gender. Mm -hmm. It's easy for them to touch on that and mm -hmm. and the big bad boogeyman who's this who's like you know the um. The, the 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 dictator who's going to put us all in an authoritarian dictatorship it's easy for those individuals on these networks and platforms to talk about this they all make more than six figures a year all of them so it's easy for you to talk that noise you going to be good because you are above the the you are above the line of demarcation which dictates that the class warfare is going to penalize you mm -hmm. it's going to victimize you so yeah you have the time to talk about all of this other stuff. 70% of this country does not. And they just want to know what the hell these people are going to do. And they're everybody's being failed. Like the population at large is being let down in a in a considerable way. And it's very disappointing. But that's what people are tired of. And you can dismiss Swaley if you want because he ain't put his tweets in complete sentences and he misspelled a few words here or there. But the spirit of his message is not incorrect. People need to stop allowing these apparatuses to control their actions and behaviors based upon these matters of symbolism. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. Look out, guys. <laughs> hey, man, these people are pretty crafty, man. So uh, one thing you have to do is put your thinking cap on. So uh, but well said, J.B., well said. <laughs> Shouts out to Sway Lee. Ha, <laughs> screw, screw. <laughs>